es geht weiter mit Vampire. Äh, wir müssen einen oder zwei Leute, die rechts stehen, finden und mit ihnen sprechen, um mehr über Dorothy Crane zu erfahren. Und der Start ist in Whitechapel, ähm, Whitechapel heißt das hier, ja, ist bedenklich. Das heißt, den Leuten geht es im Moment nicht so gut. Aber ich denke, im Moment können wir nichts dagegen tun. Einfach nur runter und die Leute suchen. Die sind alle unbekannt, aber ich seht mal mit ihm hier. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that nurse crane you mentioned. So, you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have a necessary moral fiber. Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know, blinded by science as I am? Well, you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. I am. But the answers I seek are based on facts, not superstition. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I sent him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery. Where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. I have heard enough for tonight. Goodbye. Okay, ich mag ihn nicht. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But 
Perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? I'm convinced there is more at work here than a simple epidemic. Really? <sighs> to be honest, I could say the same. Some of the sick I saw or heard of. My God, what happened to them? I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He has no relatives at all? No, except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. He never goes out? No, a few days ago he unexpectedly did. I followed him. But it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Okay, the briefkasten must we auch finden. Die hier sind auch noch unbekannt. Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off! I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson, the son. But Colossus Joe the most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? 
I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. May I ask what you do around here? I do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. I'll let your guard down, sir. Welcome, sir. Uh, please, take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse, then. Always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. So she's trying to help her fellow immigrants. Why would that make her a villain? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu. Something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. How is business around here? Business? I had no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? What do you mean, besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit. And no sign of the bottom yet. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me. Came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness. Something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Have you been hurt? No, but that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Right, then. Show me what you have. Hat er vielleicht irgendwas Brauchbares? Okay, nein, das sind nur Bauteile. Kann ich hier um die Kirche herum gehen? Wer bist du? Ah, dich kennen wir. Erschöpfung. Ähm. Mein Inventar ist da. So. Habe ich was gegen Erschöpfung? Ja. Ich gebe ich geb ihm das mal. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Okay, er erholt sich. Okay, das hilft mir als einer. Au, 
เอาเอาเอาแพลมซิทอสอินฟลูเอนเซอร์ว่าสิทุนเลื่อนเงินซึ่งตรงนี้ไปกลายเป็นแพลมซิทอสอินที่สเปนชีคริปโอนีเดมฟอลส์ซูฟามัดน Some of us come to this world. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come see it for myself alone. Ah, yes, I felt it. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, Doctor, and my family despises me. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me, especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Peaceful. That's quite an unusual way to speak about the epidemic, and very inappropriate, I must say. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them, but how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness.
Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah, oh, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles, and the arid hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh, yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. I'll leave you alone, sir. Okay, we done etwas gelernt hier. Dann suchen wir den Briefkasten auf. Blumenstrauß. Ein kleiner Blumenstrauß, ein Gutschein für eine kostenlose medizinische Untersuchung ist zwischen den Blumen versteckt. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Melia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. Very well. Goodbye then. Okay. Okay, auch hier ist wieder ein Gutschirm versteckt. Darius Petrescu's Brief. Meine lieben Kinder, es tut mir so leid, dass ihr einige Monate lang nichts von mir gehört habt. Die Lage in London war schwierig. Ich weiß, es klingt vielleicht egoistisch und töricht, wenn ihr meine Kinder noch in einem Land lebt, das vom Krieg heimgesucht wird. Aber auch hier in England tobt ein Krieg. Ein Krieg gegen Armut und Ungerechtigkeit. Diesen Krieg will ich trotz meines fortgeschrittenen Alters führen. Deshalb schreibe ich euch heute. Ich werde nicht nach Rumänien zurückkehren. Das bedeutet, ich sehe euch wahrscheinlich nicht wieder, bevor ich sterbe. Seid nicht traurig, meine Lieben. Ihr seid mittlerweile erwachsen und habt selbst Kinder. Ihr wisst, welche Opfer wir manchmal bringen müssen, um diese Welt zu einem besseren Ort zu machen. Und dieses muss ich nun bringen, damit ich mich noch ein letztes Mal nützlich finden kann. 
Ich wünsche euch ein langes und glückliches Leben. Gebt meinen Enkeln einen Kuss von mir und vergesst nicht, dass euer Vater euch auch weit ab der kalten Heimat liebt. Euer, ich, euer euch ewig liebender Vater Darius Petrescu. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Okay, das heißt, wir müssen jetzt wieder zu ihm. Das ist die Kirche. Ja. Ich möchte aber eigentlich vorher noch wieder in meinen Unterschlupf. Denn er speichert mir hier ab. Denn ich würde sagen, das ist das Ende dieses Parts. Nochmal kurz nachschauen, ob ich mir wieder was Neues herstellen kann oder was auswerten kann. Level up brauche ich jetzt keins machen. Äh, wieder fertig. Gut, Armut, Blutvergiftung, Lungen zu lang. Erkältung und Bronchitis. Wir machen da nochmal ein neues. Das kann ich nicht aufwerten. Okay, das geht mit der Stufe 2. nicht das kann ich auch nicht also im moment kann ich nicht wirklich was machen gut dann war es das aber auch wieder für heute danke fürs zuschauen bis zum nächsten mal